bear with me, guys. Just got to make sure everything's working. All right. All right. Well, welcome to an art business workshop. My name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here. Uh, I've been doing that going on like five or six years now, six years now, I think. Uh, which means I've been spending six years trying to figure out what you guys are trying to figure out, which is how do you grow a successful art or photography business uh, in today's day and age. In addition to that, I've been hosting essentially three of these sessions a week, week in, week out since before the pandemic hit. Uh, so I like to say on these calls, you know, I am not exactly, uh, I have to be in the top 10 of people in the world that talk to more artists and photographers on a week, -y, week in, week out basis than just about anybody. So I bring that up to say I've heard it all, I've seen it all, answered all types of questions, um, every niche imaginable, you know, how to get started, how to navigate a gallery relationship, what about pricing, what about branding, what about media types, what about marketing, all of it. Um, I answer a ton of these questions week in, week out, so I really do want the session to be valuable to you. Uh, whether you ever decide to do business with art storefronts or not, I want you leaving with some valuable intel that you can bolt into your business. And in addition to that, I think we have a little bit over 57, 5,800 customers, something like that at art storefronts now, and we study their data quite intently. Uh, who's selling the most originals? Who's selling the most prints? Uh, who's selling the most commissions? Uh, who's selling the highest priced originals? Who's selling the highest priced prints? What about metal prints? Uh, what about merch? Uh, who's doing the best on Facebook, on Instagram? Who has the most email followers? Uh, how big is their business? We really, really get to study that, really, really get to take like an in-depth view on what's actually working. You combine all those three things together, and I think we have some pretty unique insight as an organization at Art Storefronts uh, to talk about how to actually grow an art or a photography business uh, that is profitable and uh, maps to the ambition that you have for your business. So agenda for today, I'm going to go through sort of a quick pitch on what I believe is the right set of a mental model, the right business model, uh, how you approach selling art and photography, and ultimately some of what are the most important things if you want to build these types of businesses. And that sort of sits on top of what we do as a demo process. We run demos to see all the ins and outs of everything that we do, all the software, all the marketing, all the bells, all the whistles. Uh, the demo can sort of be thought of as like the test drive minus the cheesy salesperson, um, plus the new car smell. But the demo process is you, when you request one of those, um, somebody from our outreach team calls you. You have like a five to 15 minute conversation. Uh, you can ask all the questions you want and then they'll take a look at your art, hear about you, your situation on a one-on-one -on -one basis and then they'll schedule the full demo for you which goes on like an hour and it shows you all the bells and whistles and it's personalized to you and that's awesome. But I find we can't get into that yet if you don't sort of agree on some strategic things that are a little bit higher up. So we jump into the presentation, we do that. Uh, the minute that we are done with that, uh, we'll get right into the Q&A. And a couple of different things in the Q&A. As we roll along, uh, you'll notice that there is a chat box at the bottom of your Zoom window. If you, if you have questions and you wanna throw them in there, um, you can certainly do that. And either members of my team will answer it immediately or uh, I can get to it on the Q&A section after the presentation. In addition to that, if you're one of the folks watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, I see those questions. Um, thank you, Kim, for talking us up. We always appreciate that. So you can leave comments there, and I will get to those questions as well. And then as a final, um, as I'm sort of rolling along through the presentation and as we get into the Q&A, inevitably there will be some YouTube videos, uh, some links, uh, some PDFs to download and the like. And I just want to let you know that as soon as the presentation is over, uh, we'll be in a position where we are going to send you the replay as well as send you a web page that has like all the links that I want you to check out. So we'll throw these things in the chat as we sort of move along too. But don't feel like you need to, um, you know, take notes on that stuff or have the links or whatever because I'm going to send you all of it later. And, you know, if you have to leave the presentation halfway through, you're busy or whatever, the, the replay is there as well. So that's the format for today. Um, but let's start by getting into sort of the higher level um, presentation piece. And just excuse me. Let's get rid of my gun. Um, so I have this thing that I've created called the art selling pyramid. And it really is, it's the path to a successful art business in 2021 and beyond. I believe rather, um, 
rather convic convictedly that this is what you need to understand as an artist or a photographer above everything else before you even contemplate your website or anything else. This is critical to success. And I've stolen this concept from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with this or not, but it's a pyramid at the bottom. Uh, the idea is, is you have to sort the bottom block before you can get up to the next block uh, and on and up. And in Maslow's case, you know, he's got physiological needs at the bottom. You have to eat, you have to sleep. We all have to do that daily. Once you have that sorted, then you can move into safety, right? A house and security and fitness and money, love, belonging, esteem, self-actualization, all the rest of that jazz. Wonderful. The bottom of the art selling pyramid, okay? It's attention. And this one is so critical and so not understood by most people, but the currency of the land that we live in right now is attention. And what do I mean by that? With attention, you can do anything. Without it, you're not in the game. Stated another way, I know conclusively that every single solitary person on this call needs more attention. You need more eyeballs on your art or photography uh, if you want to build the business. And you know, stated another way in the society that we live in today, the best art, the best photography doesn't win. The best art, the best photography that gets seen wins. It is a meritocracy on marketing. It's not a meritocracy on your talent. And that is just the nature of the world that we live in today because there are some incredible artists and some incredible photographers that don't understand marketing and they are not selling anything despite the quality of their product, despite the quality of their craft. So it really is the currency of the land and no different than when we talk about Maslow's pyramid. The physiological block, the first block is something that we have to sort daily. We have to eat, we have to sleep every single solitary day. If you wanna have a successful art or photography business, you need to work on, you need to be thinking about how you get more attention on a daily basis. And attention comes in two forms. There is the rented varietal and the owned varietal, okay? The rented varietal is everything where we don't control the rules. It's subscribers on YouTube. It's people that have liked our Facebook page. Uh, it's our Instagram followers, our Twitter followers, LinkedIn, wherever you're doing your marketing, that's rented attention. Owned attention can't be taken away from you. So that's email addresses. Uh, to a lesser extent, phone numbers, snail mail addresses if you're doing uh, you know, uh, snail mail marketing. So every single solitary day, we have to be working, we have to go to work on this. And to take it sort of out of the, the art industry for, for a second, the art and photography industry, the way I like to explain it is, if I asked you guys on this call, who are some of the most powerful people in the world, powerful women in the world, let's just say? And there's a bunch of answers to that question, right? Do you know who I always say? It's the Kardashians. It's those Kardashian sisters, or Jenner sisters, or whatever you want to call them. And we can all make moral arguments about how these gals acquired this attention, but what we cannot argue is the fact that none of these gals have flown commercial for the last 15 years, that they all have 100 bajillion million dollar businesses, right? Or stated another way, if any of the gals, any of those Kardashian Jenner gals decided to take a painting or photography tomorrow, they would have a $10 million art, year, art business year one. Is that fair? No, it's not. But is the currency of the land attention? Yes, it is. So critically important you understand that. Everyone needs to understand that. From there, the next block up has an outer, outer part and an inner part. Let's just talk about the outer part first. One, you have to understand the business model. And many, many artists and photographers don't. You have to sell direct. You have to sell direct to your customer such that you retain the ability to contact that person in the future to market to them in perpetuity. You, you, you really, as an art or photography business, you need to be building a collector list. And I would go as so far to say a collector list is, this. if it's not number one, it's either number one or number two, the most important part of an art or photography business. And I took my initial thinking on the collector list from this book, Don't Be a Starving Artist. It's by Wyland, the whale guy. Most people would say he's the number one best-selling artist in the United States, and it's not even close. So you know this guy knows what he's talking about. Great book, by the way. Going to send you the link. Very thick, awesome read. He defines a collector list, okay, as anyone that will purchase eight plus pieces of artwork from Wyland over the course of his lifetime. And sometimes it's 20 or 30 or 40 pieces, but eight plus, that's how he defines it. And what ends up happening is these people buy art, he tr starts treating them differently, they come back and buy art again, the years go by, his prices go up, they come back and they buy again and again and again. 
And I've been doing this long enough now at art storefronts that I see this come to pass on a regular basis with collector lists. And you know, uh, an interesting sort of analogy is, let's say that you come out to, or you come out with a brand new series, right? And your series has 10 pieces in it. And you're gonna announce this sale on Wednesday. And the public's gonna be able to see this new series of work. And again, it's 10 pieces on Monday you email your collector list and you say, hey collectors, hey patrons, I so appreciate your support and everything that you've done for me over the years. Uh, I just wanna let you know I have this brand new series coming out and you're under no obligation whatsoever to buy anything, of course, but I just wanted to show it and thanks to your patronage, I really appreciate you, bye. And what ends up happening is at first, maybe your collectors just buy one work out of the 10. So 10% of the work before it even went to the public is sold automatically. But as time goes by, that percentage tends to grow. And so it goes 20, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70% I sometimes see. Meaning seven out of the 10 pieces before it even goes to the public, gone, sold, done. Okay, and it just becomes so insanely powerful and Weiland goes into some of the trade craft in his book about what that looks like um, on how you how you treat these people like VIPs. I have a podcast episode that's dedicated to it. April, will you put that one in the show notes? Um, how you get started when you just you haven't even made any sales, uh, the types of activities that you need to do for these folks, uh, i.e. get them on your Christmas card list and send them one every year, okay? You guys, the analogy that I give really w w with a collector list is all artists and all photographers, by and large, solopreneurs, solopreneurs, you know? You don't have, you don't have uh, uh, an entire staff and marketing team and partners. You're pretty much just one-man shows, right? And that's just the nature of the business. And you're also really, when you think about it, you're just commissioned salespeople. You're just commissioned salespeople. And if you sell, you eat. And if you don't, you don't. Right? If you do the work and you market and you get it in front of people's eyeballs and it sells, then you, you, you make a commission on that. You can have a good year. When you have a collector list, okay, all of a sudden you're, not, you're no longer a commissioned salesperson. You have a base salary. You have a yearly base salary that pays you to create, which let's be honest, every single solitary person on this call wants. All you guys want to do is paint and create or take your photos and create and do zero marketing whatsoever and just have the creative fun, right? So you turn into a, into a salesperson with a base salary when you have a collector list, when you take care of your collector list. And look, look what Kim's saying on Facebook. I sold, what does it say? 75, 7% 7 of my sale Wednesday so far to my collector's list. So she's just getting started, right? She's a, she's a customer, which is why she's leaving that comment. But it really does, it, it, it creates a base salary opportunity for you guys. And you know, one of the things that breaks my heart week in, week out on these calls is I talk to people that are in their late 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, in their 80s, and sometimes even in their 90s, and they did not understand the business model, and they did not understand that they needed to be building a collector list. And now, here they are, at whatever age that is, they're at the top of their craft, and they're just commissioned salespeople. They don't have any built-in income that's automatic. And it is terrifying. And, and, it, and it's not a knock on you guys. I know this is gonna be s some of the people on this call's experience. It's not a knock on you guys. You didn't understand, no, no one understood. And then all of a sudden the industry changed. So this list, contemplating this collector list is, it's make it or break it, full stop. I mean, it's not even close, like it's so critical. Okay. So we're working our attention daily. Uh, we are building, uh, we understand the business model and we're building a collector list. Next up is the three ways to sell art. There are three ways to sell art in photography. I believe that every artist, every photographer needs to be aware of it, number one. Number two, you need to be deploying these sales ways every opportunity you get, okay? What's the first way, best way? Trick question, this one we all know it. It's in person, face to face. It always has been. It always will be the best way to sell art, full stop. But what about the fact that all of us are geographically fixed on this earth? Number one. Number two, we all need sleep. Number three, we can't have 15 conversations at once concurrently. So the next way to sell art, 
It's on your website, right? It solves for those problems. It solves for the time when you are um, people, some, not geographically in your area. It solves for the time when you are sleeping. It solves for the time you can have 50 people on your site at once. Um, so it's very, very important that you have the website capable of selling your art. A pretty portfolio site does not get this done. Let's talk about the, the new way though, the newest way. And this is one that the entire art selling world, photography selling world, as well as other industries is all trying to figure out at once. And it's via live video, exactly like we're doing right here, in an either one-to-one -one format or a one-to-many. What would the one-to-one -one format be? I go to Joanne's website. I say, Joanne, I found some of your pieces. They're really, really interesting. I'm just wondering if we could jump on a Zoom call and you could show me a couple of pieces and talk about pricing and I can get to know you. And Joanne says, no problem, Patrick. And she sends me a Zoom link and we jump into a Zoom call exactly like we are right now. And Joanne's holding up some of her pieces and I'm getting to know her. And then her dog jumps on the couch and I like dogs too, so we have a laugh about that. And then she's telling me her inspiration about some various different pieces and the pricing and where it might look good and she's getting the sales over the line. That's one-to-one, -one, okay? What is the one-to-many? The one to many is this concept of a live art show, okay? And there's a couple of different ways that you can do the live art shows, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rattle through some videos here and show you. But I'm gonna give you this one, for instance. And so what you see here is an artist in his garage second, studio, Matthew, and, then, and, then and he's yeah. got some older works uh, that he's showing off and attempting to sell, and he is streaming live to YouTube, he is streaming live to Facebook, he is streaming live to his Instagram account, and he's talking about the art, and he's merchandising the art, and he's quoting price, and he didn't have to leave his house, and he's dealing with comments in real time. This particular individual, over a 15-day period on these two sales, uh, without having to leave his house, sold approximately 62 works for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian. Didn't have to leave his house. Kept 100% of the revenue from those transactions did not have to align himself with the gallery. Pretty amazing results, uh, amazing results, right? In addition to that, uh, with this particular gentleman, a uh, longtime art storefronts customer and, and fan, he also, in the middle of COVID, had a gallery show, uh, like, like the good old fashioned days, right? Problem is, it was in Canada. Obviously, attendance was extremely restricted. Obviously, no one was traveling around this time. You can see this was streamed live July 24, 2020, so this was still in the heat of COVID times and about a year ago now, and almost, and what do we do? He had the show, and the very next day, uh, the laptop got turned on, he has a glass of wine in his hand, like it's the gallery opening night, and he's walking through the show with the same streaming. Uh, people are asking questions in real time uh, for the pieces that had not sold already to his collector list, by the way, primarily. Um, they could take a crack at him, and, and they could ask questions, and they could send him a message and potentially purchase. And it is just absolutely phenomenal. It is the new way of selling art. It is as good as it gets. It is as close to being in person as you could possibly imagine. And it is forever going to change how art and photography are sold. What have we done since then? We got really good results with Matthew, incredible results. The question became, can we duplicate it? So here's another You're instance. Not Betsy. This particular painter uh, is another art storefronts customer named Meg. She lives in Kansas City. She was moving out of one studio into another studio. Uh, so we ran a basement sale with her, moving sale, I guess we called hers. And this was on June 3rd, so what, you know, almost a month ago now. And in her case, she had 82 pieces in it. Um, they weren't, they weren't because, because she's a painter and she does like color studies and some watercolor drawings and the like, right? It wasn't like it was her huge pieces. So it took her all year. This is just excess inventory that she had. And what was interesting is you remember what I said about the collector list? She sold 46% of the show to her collector list before the show even ran 46% of the show. Boom, done. In this case, she sold 72 pieces for a little bit over $12,000 and you know, again, they weren't huge pieces, so it wasn't a high AOV, average order value. They were little sketches and such, right? So, okay, we got this working incredibly well with Meg. And so what have we done since then? We've run one after another, after another, after another. Why? 
because there is so much trade craft to figure out in these things, how it works with an artist, how it works in a photographer, the various different settings, the various different subject material, various different social followings, how you email, how you get butts and seats ahead of time, uh, what you do after the fact, uh, uh, what's the best price point to have, um, you know, what, what are all of these various different variables that you can incorporate and type of these, what, <laughs> I forgot about Karen's, what impact does wearing white gloves have, right, when, when, when you're doing the show, and sorry, this one's loading, um, but this is just the future of selling art, full stop, and, you know, by, solely by virtue of the fact that we are doing so many of them, uh, we're figuring it out faster than anyone else does. And I always forget to have this thing pulled up, so just bear with me. Art Market Report. Your, your industry is not one that has a lot of reports, okay? And so there's one by Art Basel and UBS that they put out every year called the, the, the Art Market 2021, the Art Market 2020. Uh, and then there's another one by a company called Hiscox. And admittedly, these two reports are at the very, very top end of the artist scale meaning you know, the, the top five to 6% revenue earning artist scale in the entire world. So a lot of Sotheby's folks, Crystal, uh, Christie's folks, uh, you know, high net worth pieces, you know, starting prices at like $25,000 and up. Okay, fine, but the data is still relevant. So in this report, and I'll get my fat head out of the way, um, and you can download it and I'll just, again, I'm gonna send this to you, but I think, it's, I think it's, it's really, really good. I mean, despite the fact it's at the top of the industry and for the top tier people, it's still very, very impressive. And it goes over things like the global art market in 2020, dealer sales, auction sales, art fairs, online sales, global wealth and collective perspectives, and then the economic impact and conclusions. And so it's a good read. Um, you, guys, you guys should totally scan it and check it out. And you know what, what I find that's so interesting about this report is they talked about how over the last year, the COVID year, that Art sales exploded to what they call HNWs, high net worth individuals, uh, via something that they like to call OVRs. OVRs is short for online viewing rooms. Online viewing rooms is a fancy and snooty way of a Zoom call, exactly like you are right now. The artist and the work is on one end, the high net worth individual is on the other. It could be on Zoom or Google Meet. You can call it OVRs, you can call it whatever you want. You can call me Susan, I don't care. It's the future of selling art full stop. The people at the very, very top end of the art world where everybody wants to get aspirationally are trying to figure this out. The people at the very, very bottom that have sold nothing are trying to figure this out. Everyone in between is trying to figure this out. All of the shows and theirs that lost all of their booths, which by the way, they're all coming back right now, which is fantastic. We love that. They are all trying to figure it out so that they can sell more booth space and run these virtual shows. So full stop, the future of selling art. And it's, it's, it's exciting because as a company, Art Storefronts is like, oh, well, you guys are a website provider. Uh, yeah, we're rather more than that. We're actually pioneers of how to sell art and photography via live art shows solely because of the fact we've run more of them than anyone else. And that'll never stop. I think we have another 20 with customers running this week just figuring all these things out. And it's like, okay, Patrick, that's amazing. What are you figuring out? Well, let me tell you what I'm figuring out. Just little things, okay? Little things here and there. Notice anything about the quality on this one? Pretty terrible, isn't it? Turns out, when you're running a live art show, you cannot have your significant other upstairs streaming Netflix while the show is going on, okay? There's not enough bandwidth. Now, there's a lot of trade craft to these things. Well, your kids can't be on their iPads watching things. You cannot be, someone else can't be streaming Netflix or whatever else. So, you know, you learn things as you go. And these are the types of things that you can only learn from, from just shipping as many of these as possible. And we've been doing that for quite some time, uh, in addition to our own online streaming expertise. Like, you know, like I said, this thing's on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Why? Because I like being on video? No, I hate it. Um, so, you know, yeah, crappy quality. I know, Natasha. You see what Natasha says here? Ugh, that's been my biggest problem with my li live streams, crappy quality. Trust me, we know. I've run into every single solitary issue imaginable. Um, and that's why we're getting better and better and better. It's sort of like, you know, it's sort of like the first explorers that arrived in America. Like, there was no map. There's no map. No one's ever, I mean, maybe the Indians could have given you a map, but otherwise there's no map. Like, just start heading west and figure it out. That's exactly what it is because it is just such new territory. Um, I get really fired up about it because I love it. I love it so much and it's just... You know, we have a we have a premise, okay, um, as as art storefronts as a business, and the premise is video. Again, nothing new, 
been around a long time, but it's sort of had its new moment in the sun as a result of COVID. Video is just a catalyst for any type of reaction that you're trying to achieve, right? And sorry, Joanne, I'm gonna keep picking on you. You're the only one with your camera on. Let's say Joanne discovers art storefronts. Maybe she sees an Instagram post or maybe she sees a Facebook post uh, and she ignores it. And then a couple of days later, thank you, Lori, for being brave. I saw that. And a couple of days later, then, you know, she sees another Facebook or Instagram ad and maybe she clicks it and maybe she goes to the website and then maybe she gets on our email list. And then we email her way too much, like we email all of you way too much for the next three years. OK. And then finally, she she decides to get on the phone. OK, that took three years and she becomes a customer. Now she's jumped into a conversation like this. I'm getting to pick on her because she's got her camera on. We're starting to build some rapport. She gets to decide whether or not we know what we're talking about, whether I know what I'm talking about, and it builds no like and trust, and it speeds up the potential chemical reaction that is getting someone to sign up for art storefronts. Now, let's do selling art and photography, okay? Do you think it's any different for you guys? No. People want to know who the artist or the photographer is. You guys are part of the brand as much as anything else, right? They want to get to know, like, and trust you. They want, everyone thinks this is not the case, buy a new piece from a new artist. It's on your wall. You have the dinner party over. Everyone's admiring it, and you're like, yeah, I know the artist. Joanne's a real good friend of mine. We've gone back a long time. Let me introduce you to her, right? Everyone loves saying that, right? Um, especially when it's a talented artist. So really, really important there. Big, big deal. Top lock, last one, everything else. And when I say everything else, I mean everything else. I mean, you have a retail gallery that's paying you money, uh, but not giving you your customer information so you can't build a collector list. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. I've never met a revenue source I didn't like. Sorry. I should put this back up. Um, or you have one of the online galleries, Saatchi, Fine Art America, Etsy, Redbubble, Radiant 6, any of them. Don't care. Great but it's gotta be in addition to attention and building your own collector list and the three ways to sell art. Or you're doing the show in Thera Circuit. I love the show in Thera Circuit. We have playbooks that walk you through how to get more out of the show in Thera Circuit, which is fantastic. By the way, side note, and this is just really, really encouraging. You know, we have a customer in Chicago and he had a $30,000 day two weeks ago, the best he's ever had at a Thera in Chicago. Like. People are sick and tired of being pent up and not being able to do their normal stuff. And so these shows and fairs that are popping up, we're seeing some really, really good data. So that's a tangent. But anyway, show and fair circuit in addition, okay, to working on attention, in addition to the collector list and three ways of selling art. So that's the ball game uh, that underpins a tremendous, just a tremendous amount of our thinking and how we approach things. And we think it is so important. And that is absolutely, those are just some truths that you have to bank uh, if you're going to make it and you're going to be successful. And the wonderful thing, again, I talk to more of you guys on a week-in, week-out basis than just about anyone on this planet. One thing that I see time in, time out, are people in their 30s, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, in their 80s. Why do I bring that up? Have some perspective of how much longer you're all going to be doing this. Okay? Artists and photographers, it's not like, you know, you, were, you had one job and then you went through a midlife crisis and decided you wanted to do something else. No. You guys are courageous for life. I see it week in and week out. There's sometimes when you take it seriously and less seriously, but you have the perspective of the rest of your lives to be working on building this business. And if you don't understand that pyramid and you are not selling direct and you are not building a collector list, you are not in control of the future of that business. You might have had these other revenue sources that were doing fantastic before, but guess what? COVID hit and they were gone. And what were you supposed to do? Just sit there with your hat in your hands, wait, like you don't have a mortgage, you don't have rent to take care of. So I get real passionate about, about that pyramid, but it is just critical, critical, critical. So really excited about all of that. Um, and David's telling me that I'm having audio fluctuation problems. Does anyone else have audio issues? No, yes? No, okay, Juan's telling me no. I think it's on your end, David. Um, cause other people are telling me no, but always tell me that if you think the audio is going out. So, all right, that's what I got. That's my presentation. I'm sticking to it. Um, at this point we'll open it up to Q and a, um, a couple of things too on the Q and a is number one, if you're one of the brave ones with the camera on and you have a question, you could raise your hand. We'll see that. We'll jump in there. Um, for everyone else at the very bottom of the zoom bar is like a little reactions button. If you click the reactions button that allows you to digitally raise your hand, it kind of gives me a cue. I'll just turn the mics off one at a time uh, and, and, and talk to you guys. 
Uh, if you don't want to turn your camera on, you don't have to turn your camera on. I hate being on video. I totally get it. So you can just answer. You can ask your questions via audio. That's totally okay. And then, again, for those that are doing um, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, I'm going to see those comments. I can respond to those comments. Um, and we'll go through that way. So, okay. Um, so, Theo, did you have a question or were you just waving? I can't, I, I'd have to unmute you, so. We might as well just make Sophia first, even if she doesn't have a question. All right, you, you'll have to unmute Sophia. It's on the bottom left-hand corner. There's like a little mic icon you can hit. Yep, gotcha. There, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, no, I don't have any questions. This is new to me, so I'm very interested in your in your presentation. How, how have you gone about selling your art up till now? I... I just retired a few years ago, and that's when I started painting. So um, I really have only sold to friends, family, and there were two shows that I participated in, and I sold a painting there. But um, I'm just now getting started into making it a business. I love it. Good for you. Good for you. And so you didn't make yeah. mistakes for the last 20 years of not building a collector list because you just, you know, <laughs> you were working or well, whatever, so... Yeah. I've only been working on it for about three, four years. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Okay. You, you, got, you got a lot of life left to be able to work on it. So just start building that collector list. <laughs> I have. Yeah. And then, have. and then marketing to it consistently and constantly, which is just so, so important. Um, oh, no. I see a comment from somebody on YouTube talking about how their Facebook advertising account has been closed. Yeah, you're probably going to have to start another one, Vicky. That is a, that's, a, that's a real pain situation. Um, that, happens, that happens all the time to everybody. One of the uh, one of the issues with social media marketing in today's day and age, not easy. Um, but what else, guys? Anyone else questions? Everyone's just tired after the long summer weekend. Can't think of anything. Don't worry, I can do I can do poking and prodding. Yeah, it can be about literally anything, anything that we do, um, anything that you're struggling with. Uh, are you just getting started? Uh, did you have a great gallery relationship pre-COVID? You're wondering if that's going to come back. Do you have questions about pricing, uh, print on demand? Anything we do, you can you can certainly ask. But I can I can definitely ramble in the uh, you know in the meantime. Um, how many of you guys have actually shipped a live art show? Is really the question, right? Very very few. Okay, looks like Natasha's going. All right, Natasha, you're next. Go ahead. You'll have to unmute. I'll let you know. You. Yep, gotcha. So I have a fairly successful like crafting business okay. which is uh fiber arts related um but i'm kind of i've been doing that for like 13 years now mm -hmm. and like i'm kind of just tired of it mm -hmm. so um i was trying to like think about trans like transferring more into the fine art aspect of my life um which i haven't sold them specifically i mean i've done like little print on demand things and stuff like that but not like actual originals or pieces like that um mm -hmm. and i was wondering if you guys thought that it would be like how much of my current clientele could you know be used as a mailing list or whatever for oh, 100 percent of it 100 percent of it like, i mean they know me and i would think that they would like like to support exactly my exactly you, you know what it is it's like the um perfect example I'll give you that'll take it out of your world, but it, it applies to your world is we see so many working based service photographers. They take the Christmas card photos or they take the child portraits, right? Or they're doing uh, the, uh, the AYSO photos or whatever, and they've been doing it forever and they have a relationship with all these parents and they've sold prints before. And, and you just have to let these people know that you're now doing fine art. They know and like and trust you that they built up over the years. And so once they know that you have this other component to your business, they're going to check it out and they're going to purchase. It doesn't mean 100% of them are going to be interested, but it doesn't matter. They all know, like, and trust you. So it's just like another service that you're adding to the pot, right? So you yeah, absolutely can mix them. But I don't, yeah. but one thing, you can transition, okay? But I don't want you walking away from fairly significant craft business. That sounds easy. To, that sounds nice to me. Good revenue source. Well, it's a lot of hands-on work i mean it is a lot of a lot of work <laughs> yeah the, I mean, the admin the admin portion or the creating or just all oh, of it the, all of it oh. but mostly it's just very labor intensive got it so, you know it's i i mean i i feel like 
it was fine before COVID when I had a couple of employees to help me with all the hands-on stuff, but yeah. like after COVID and I lost my employees cause they didn't want to come in cause of the whole COVID thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I could rehire them and everything. I could rehire people, not those people in particular cause they moved and stuff, but like, I don't know. I mean, it's great when that happens, but even so, like, I mean, I was going to shows like probably 30 weekends out of the year yeah. and that just, really gets it's exhausting i know it's exhausting yeah. it's it's really hard you know it, case in point why i love the shows though like you know we I have the, people. the shows are great fun if you didn't have to haul a van load of crap with you <laughs> yeah or or be on your feet for eight hours a day or stay in a crafty hotel and eat crafty meals and come back gassed on monday and lose a day right or on sunday right, and lose right, right. Um, i mean i love doing the shows don't get me wrong i really really do it's actually the, my favorite part of my job but mm-hmm. it is I, I have a hard time thinking, I mean, it's really great for PR and it's really great for like customer engagement, but mm-hmm. it's not so great for the bottom line really, because like you can make a decent amount of money at a show, but you're also spending a lot of money to be there. So for sure, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's really, really hard. We, you know, we have, we have some very focused ways to get more out of a show that you can do with marketing. Yeah. centers around kind of the fishbowl concept and then some follow-up that you do after the fact and yeah, i would you know. be really interested in know- knowing that because yeah. I, I mean anything that i can do to make more what i'm doing like more valuable that's i mean hour you only have so many hours so yeah yeah um we we, we can definitely help you like you know the, the 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 marketing piece is really the whole ball game you can list a lot. What are the crafts by nature? What are they? Just out of curiosity. Uh, yarn. I do yarn dyeing, so I have massive amounts of yarn everywhere. <laughs> Got it. Got it. You have like the number one yarn collection in the world. You could sell all of that directly on the same, on the same website, by the way. Um, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even need to split them if you're so inclined. Um, That's okay. That's a, that was a question. Yeah. 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 You could sell anything in our stores. I mean, they're 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 sort of custom tailored and set up for wall art. Again, why we do the demo process? Go and do that so you can see all the bells and whistles. But you can sell whatever you want. It's it, at the end of the day, it's just an e-commerce shopping cart, right? Yeah. Right uh, now, I'm using Shopify for that. But yeah. if I could combine them, I think it might be advantageous. So. Yeah. Oh no, it def- it definitely would. 100 percent, it would. Um, you know, you don't want to split the attention that you do have, and it's like very easy to just okay. They're both on the same site, yes, but there's one button for one and one button for the other. You mm-hmm. go where you want mm-hmm. to, and thank you, and have a great day. Yeah, I think I've been thinking about that a lot, and that's I, it makes more sense to combine them. I think for my for my clientele too, because a lot of them would like the kind of art that I would do. So hundred percent, hundred percent. You got to just fix the marketing problem. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's it's everybody, right? It, and it and it just keeps going up and up and up, like literally every company we're all we're all just at war for attention i mean that's it it's why, very hard it's why the show and fair circuit works right because the attention is there right like mm-hmm. there are people walking through they've done the work for you you don't have to do it and you know as a result of that you've never it's like it's like you've never had to exercise right and now all of a sudden like the desire to exercise is there more stronger strongly than any other time before which is which is super interesting but ultimately it's what we do more than anything else it's what we teach right like because it's it's everyone's problem we realized sort of early on in our own journey that a website's not enough. A website's not enough, right? Like I could grab anyone on this call and I'm the genie out of the lamp. I will magically move your website, Natasha, wherever you want. You won't have to move a pencil. Uh, you won't even have to dye a strand of yarn. I will do all of it, okay? And what would happen when I moved the business completely to that other website? Nothing changed. Nothing changed. You were probably still doing what you were doing before, or in most people's cases, not doing really much of anything at all because you don't have a website problem. You all have a marketing problem. We all have an attention to marketing problem. And really, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we teach. That's what we do more than anything else. You should definitely get a demo. We can definitely help you. And I think- Yeah, I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to do it later today, actually. So. Yeah, I think what would be interesting for you is you will, you know, you, you, have, you have more ways to win than most people, right? Because you have all these other products that you're selling and the marketing that we teach you uh, the marketing muscles that we build up in you, you're just going to continue to leverage forever to sell yarn as much as you are yarn. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's really what I want because I figure I can kind of apply it broadly. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you. All right. Pam was next. I'm going to find you, Pam. All right, Pam, you'll need to hit the mic icon bottom. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, thanks very much. 
Yeah, um, my pleasure. My artist, I'm kind of like the promoter. <laughs> um, he has quite a collection, but uh, you know, I'll probably see in the demo. Um, is it advisable just to to do ten pieces to start, or yeah, that I, are kind of similar with the as far as um, the texture of the canvases, mm -hmm. or yeah, so it's advisable to have at least one when you start. That's it. And one sort of, picture, you mean? Yeah, yeah. The sort of the, the abstraction, the takeaway is that I see this time and time and time again. It's like too much. No, yeah. we'll just so get we'll just get started when we have X amount of pieces, or I'll just get started when I figure out my branding, or no, I'll just. I'm not get trying to put that process up. I just want to know if you want ten or thirty. Yeah, it, it like there's 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 no right answer to that question because it's literally different for everyone, and you can't get it wrong, and it's completely reversible whatever you decide, right? So you could start with ten, you could start with thirty, uh, go at it for six months and say thirty's too many, go down to ten, or go back up to thirty. Like, d don't worry about that part of it at all. Um, early early on, until you start marketing, and start driving some traffic, you, you're not going to know what the right answer is anyway, right? It's all of us just standing around with our finger in the air. So if um, uh, this gentleman um, started his storefront, mm -hmm. um, there's a, can we put other links on other people's site to bring them to the storefront? Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you help with that or not? Yeah, we, we, we have a pretty robust support team um, that helps with just about everything. So it's, you know, you're, you're not going to run into any technical snags that we can't help you solve, that's for sure. Okay, I'll talk more a little bit later. Wonderful. Thank Thanks, ma'am. All right. I love, I, love, I love this one. Watch how I answer this one. What's the best setting to do your first art show? I don't have a lot of space in my home, so I'm trying to see where I can do that and when the time comes. I've seen people have walked around their home to display the art and having lots of arts to display in the background. Thank you. Uh, Cassandra, the best setting is whatever setting that gets you to do it today. Run one today. Turn the, turn the camera on, which is this, start it, and just go. And say, hey, guys, I don't have a lot of space in my house because I have so much art I need to move. Make me a reasonable offer. The point is, don't overthink it. Just get going and ship that first one. You'll, you'll, you'll learn a ton. Uh, and you literally can't do enough of them. You're going to have to do thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So just ship the first one, get started. Um, that's what it comes down to. All right, hold on. William's got like a longer question. I'm going to unmute you, William. Just because I figured there's probably going to be follow-ups to this. Um, while William's getting his microphone, he, he asked, is there a better way to start? Well, why, don't you, why don't you just ask it, William, then everyone will be able to hear. Okay. Uh, is there a better way to start? You know, with one type of media, try all types at once and segregate by subject matter. Um, had 10 years in the jewelry des design industry while also doing a lot of pen and ink drawing and some oils. Okay. I also have a lifelong background in photography. I have okay. supportive friends and family, but my client list is long gone from the two jewelry shops that I worked 30 to 40 years ago. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm 64 and mm -hmm. yes, I have started painting. I have three in process right now. Okay. Uh, you know, I've got photos that I could be printing and put up. And uh, what I don't want to do is <laughs> what I've been accused of in the past is trying to flood a market. Mm -hmm. so yeah i don't I, I don't worry about floods in the slightest i would put all of that stuff up Good. on on the website i would start marketing and you 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 get the data uh the only data that matters right which is it might take a, a year until we know what the answer to that question is right and right. i can't tell you no okay. one else can tell you the only thing they can tell you is the market right so it, you know it's no different than you know you created 15 new jewelry designs and you're like, Patrick, well, which one's going to sell best? Um, how many should I have? It's like, William, I don't know. But we have a bunch of people walking through the store on a daily basis. So let's put the doggone things in the window and see what happens, right? You're not right. going to know until somebody purchases it. And that's no different than it is with art. And, you know, everyone thinks that they need to have this, like, narrowly defined style or there's some magical playbook. There is no magical playbook. I would put all of it up. I would put the ink up. I would put the paintings up. I would put the old jewelry stuff you have knocking about up. I would put the, uh, the photographs up. And I would start marketing, right? And I would see what ends up happening. And the crazy thing is, only the market can tell you. You never know. You might have, gotcha. a, you might have a normal 
William, after a year, let's just say. You've done the marketing for a year. We've been through all of these holiday sales, uh, a Q4 sale. We feel like we have a good idea. You might get an 80-20, meaning 80% of your income is going to come from 20% of the things in the store, right? If that's yep. the case, then you maybe have a point, you have a decision to make at that point, should you go all in on whatever it is, right? Let's say it's the ink drawings. Like maybe you should do that. But guess what? The, the flip side can happen, which means... 10% of your revenue comes from one, 20% of your revenue comes from the other, right? Like they all can be doing equal amounts of work, in which case you're the brand as much as anything else and just keep marketing moving forward. And that's, and gotcha. that's literally how these things go. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it, I, I would have suspected that from previous talks that you've given, mm -hmm. but you know, I wasn't doing anything at the time I was doing, I was, doing other employment and now that i'm doing less of that and i'm getting motivated you know i wanted to just be a little more direct with the question so i appreciate that no i love it it's a great question awesome thank you it's the crystal ball question is what it is right <laughs> and and you know it's like when my mom asked her financial advisor if she's gonna have enough money to live the rest of her life and it's like how am i supposed to know I don't know how old you're going to live till. I don't know what the market's going to do. I don't know if there's going to be five more COVIDs, right? But, you know, you just, you, you get so many people that get hung up on these various different questions and then they just don't ever do anything. They don't take the action and they're trying to solve the, the, the problem in their own head. And, and it's like, after you've had some experience with this, you realize the only way you can solve the problem is by real feedback from real people, right? It's like, oh, I want to be a cook. I want to start a restaurant. Well, what have you done? I've got these 16 different dishes that I've made and I've tried all of them myself. Oh, that's wonderful. Have you served them to anyone else? Have they asked, are, have they asked for seconds? How are you ever going to know, right? Like, right. you know, one is not a big enough sample size, nor is your family or friends, nor is your mother, because all of them will tell you it's great no matter what, right? All, 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 always, but you, you really have to sell it. So that's, right. that, that is the bottom line of it all. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. All right, I'm seeing what else did I mix in questions. I'm just scanning, scanning through the chat here. Just give me an instance. I think I've got them all. Um, you know, one, one other thing that I would say is you guys are on this thing at an advantageous time because we have a, a big summer sale that's running that literally ends at the end of the month, which I think is in two days or three days, uh, depending on how many days of the week. So I would say if you're in a position on this call where you're... Uh-oh. That has... I don't know how that one got unmuted, but thank you for that, Anthony. Whatever's going on in your background is crazy. Um, if you, if this is the first time you've seen us, okay, and you're just in the discovery mode, don't worry about it. But if if we pique your interest in the slightest, get a demo, get a demo before the month ends. If it is something you're interested in, uh, you'll get a crazy deal because we're having a summer sale. If it's not, then don't worry. They'll never call you again. We don't have like a pushy sales team or anything like that. So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, but what else? Other questions? While well, we're still going? And you can either do the, the, the normal hand raise if you've got one. Yep. All right. I got you, Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel. Give me, give me a couple of details about this summer sale you're talking about. I, I, well, I know very little about the details because I just stay out of their world and they stay out of my world. Um, but I know it is some significant percentage off and I believe some, some issuance of free months as well. Um, and they, they might even throw in some marketing services. I don't know. You'd have to, you, you literally have to follow up with them. But at the end of, at the end of the month, they always, they, they, they always have some crazy deals is, is the takeaway. And they know like, you know, I, I can't even keep all the marketing tasks I have in my head, in my head. So they know all the ins and outs and prices and plans and everything else. And there's just not enough room in my dome to learn all that. So um why, why we separate the thing but did you did you have a follow-up one daniel i think you, you muted again so i have to unmute you again <laughs> well yeah i mean who do i who do i contact or so have you have you requested a, a demo yet or no no um there's a whole bunch of links in here that you can click that says you know request a demo here or whatever um okay or you can do it on the website and it's just a form you fill out. You put on your number, they'll email you. Hey, do you, when do you want to set up a call? All that jazz. That's how we do it. Oh, did you mute again? Yeah. I think you're, the way your, your words work, it just constantly mutes you maybe. 
I, I, I had the call and <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Um, well, you could tell me what, what happened. You... Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I had the demo. Is the demo the call or I had a 10 minute call? Is that the demo or? No, I, yeah. I so, so, so the way that it works is the 10 minute call is where you ask all your questions. They get to know you and then they schedule the demo, which is like an hour. So I don't know. Did they tell you to come to this session or what? Who, who did you speak to? Oh, your thing just keeps muting. I, I spoke to a guy named Matt. Matt, yeah, our resident, our resident Kiwi. Um, and what was what was the outcome of that call? Like, hey, do you want to see the whole thing, or he told you to come to this? Uh, he gave, he sent me the link to this. Yeah. Okay. So he'll follow. I'm sure he'll follow up after the fact. What what they sometimes do is if they feel like you really just discovered us and don't really know what we do. They'll a lot of times send you to this so you can get a better idea before you go into the demo. Makes it more valuable. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks, Daniel. Um, yep. I got you, Robert. Don't worry. All right. Robert, you'll need to unmute. I'll let you know when you get it. Oh, I think you press the camera button instead of the audio button. Yep, there you go, camera back. And normally if you just tap it, Robert, it's it's the microphone icon right to the left of the video one. I can see you moving the finger. Sometimes it can be annoying. Yeah, it's the one thing I can't do for you. You have to be able to hit it. Yeah, so it's not doing its thing. Well, if you want to, if you want to throw it in the chat, you might you might have a mic issue or the wrong mic or something weird might be going on there. Sometimes that happens too. Yeah, I don't know. Most of the time, Zoom is pretty pretty seamless and it does work. It's a great platform that they have, but from time to time, there's going to be annoying things. Sometimes you have to pop out and pop back in, and it'll 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 get working. Um, yeah. But I'll give you I'll give you a few more seconds just to see. In the meantime, why why Robert's attempting to get that sorted? Um, anyone else? Final question. Can be about anything. There we go. Yep, there we go. I like it. Mm -hmm. Good job. Do you, do you provide um, assistance or instructions for us to enter into new markets? Yes. I mean, we essentially teach you to market all year long. So that's, that's pretty much comprehensive, all of it, right? Um, how to market, how to email, how to run sales, how to pivot, right? So, you know, a lot, a lot of what you're saying in terms of finding new markets centers around a pivot, you know, a, a, an attempt at a new style or a new subject matter or new material, right? Um, or in, entering into um, social media markets, things like that. Yeah, I mean, what, what ends up happening is, is it because you've never done any marketing at all and never done any consistent marketing, which is most often the case, once we teach you to start mm -hmm. marketing just by virtue, j just naturally by learning that skill set, you end up entering a whole bunch of new markets anyway, right? Um, but it's less about markets and more just about getting more attention, right? And, you know, when you, when, you, when you start capturing emails, when you start emailing the emails on a regular basis, when you start having social posts that dovetail with the email content that we're having you send out, when you um, are having these live art shows, the markets end up coming as a result of that, right? It's not like a, you know, a formal, well, hey, you're in a new market. Um, we just teach you to get more attention in general. And, you know, if it's parrots for interest in, in, in the background, uh, Natasha in the chat said that's beautiful, by the way. Um, then we'll teach you how to get that in front of more people, like straight up, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's an actual parrot, photograph of a parrot. I, I, himself. I grew up, I grew up, my dad had birds. So I grew up with a Panamanian Amazon my whole life. That looks like a scarlet macaw or something, huh? I don't know if you can see, but... Yeah, it's a beautiful bird. Is it a macaw? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. He's, he was in a tree. 
Yeah, I think it, I think it looks like a macaw, scarlet macaw. Beautiful bird, so. It, it's it's better than it's showing up on there. It's actually a pretty cool photo. Yeah, yeah, Natasha knows birds. Um, but yeah, do you do you, do you feel like that answered your question? Well, as always, there's a lot there's there's always a lot of mystery till you start asking the questions and and experiencing it and going through it. So. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, again, that's why we do the demo process so you can see the whole thing. But really, at the end of the day, everyone thinks that we're like a software platform. And yes, we've got great software. But really, what we are is we're, a, we're an art business university. You know, we, we essentially teach an MBA and how to actually grow an art business. And 100% of that, for the most part, is just marketing because it's the biggest problem that everyone has, right? And so, you know, we have a calendar 365 days a year that tells you what to do, when to do it, when to run a sale, when to do your own marketing. We have a whole bunch of DIY education that explains all the various different things that we have you to do. Here's how you post on the socials. Here's how you go live. Here's how you run a sale. Here's how you do the show in Thera Circuit. And then we have weekly Tuesdays, Thursdays, teaching classes like this on Zoom where we teach you how to do the thing that we're, te we're telling you to do on the calendar. And then there's support uh, also in Zoom six days a week when you get hung up, all of that collectively, the easiest way to describe it is a full-blown university experience with no graduates because everything in the digital marketing landscape changes so doggone often. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Robert. All right. I think we will leave it there. Uh, thanks everybody for attending. I will send you guys a video after the fact uh, with all the follow-up materials, the links, everything to check out. And there'll be links in there too for a demo if you want to get that and go see the software. Uh, and I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And thanks everybody for the questions. It was a great session. See you guys all later.